peace of Yah that surpasses all understanding, that helps us to be able to do what we need. Hallelujah. We got the peace going on right now. All right. Uh, we, we, we are going to look into a few scriptures today. Um, you all remember the story. You all remember the story when uh, Christ was uh, in the ship. But before that, he did quite a few things. Uh, many times when he would uh, be out, he would get tired uh, because the people would be thronging him. People would be all around him because he was a man of blessings. You know, the Bible said that when he was here on earth, he went about doing good, healing all that was sick and oppressed of the devil. And he didn't turn down uh, cases like sometimes people uh, uh, may think. He didn't turn down cases, but he healed folk that were sick. And he, I don't I don't read where he uh, constantly was turning people down and turning them away, but he would ask them questions that would help them to build their faith in him. So we're looking uh, at the peace that we need to have for the time that we're living in. This is a time for us to express the peace that we need uh, to be able to make the journey that's before us. All right, uh, we're going to move forward. We're in the book of St. Mark, chapter number four, and, um, and we're going to look at a few scriptures on today. Uh, the in the book of St. Mark, chapter 4, verse 1, it says, And he began uh, again to teach by the seaside, and there was gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship, and sat in the ship, and the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. Uh, so many times, you know, when you see where the Messiah would go into the ships or uh, go apart from them and move out a little bit further, they didn't have um, public uh, address systems at, at, during that time. Like we have a PA system that will cause the, the uh, volume of our voice to be carried, you know, across the airways. Well, uh, they had the wisdom to be able to move out and get in a boat, move away from the people, and their voice would echo against the waters, against the sea, and be able to go up to the places where the people were the multitudes were and you can imagine that the people had to be quiet it couldn't be a lot of commotion for them to be able to hear him but they had to to be quiet enough so that they could hear him speaking because it was a multitude of people so he would go out into the seaside and, and move out a little bit in the water and sit uh, in the sea and the whole multitude was by the sea on the land then the scripture says, and he taught them many things by parables and said unto them in his doctrine, hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. See, the scripture uh, is based upon sowing. The things that you do in life, they come up again. That's why it's so important for us to continue in prayer, to continue to come before him and make our request known unto him because this is sort of like sowing seed. Your prayers are seeds that are being sowed. When you pray uh, for, for your children or your families or whatever, those are like seeds that you're sowing. So that's why it's a good practice to always pray. That's why the scripture tells us to pray without ceasing. So these seeds, uh, the more powerful the prayer, the more seeds you sow, the more comes up in, in reaping time. So we are, are sowing today. We're sowing for your lives. We're sowing into your life. We're speaking into your life the deliverance and uh, the blessings that you need to be able to be sustained. So we say that he said, hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. See, many people during that time, they, they, they grew their own food. And they would do bartering. They would trade one another. And it may go back to those days again with everything up in arms and everything, and, you know, uh, getting uh, scarce and different things like that. Uh, we may have to go back to bartering. 
especially if they usher in the mark of the beast where you won't be able to buy and sell with money. You'll be trading with one another to be able to be sustained. That's why we need one another. And, you know, we we want to be delivered. Many of us don't want to experience a lot of these things that's written in the scripture. But just in case, you want to be prepared to go so that you'll be sustained to the next level of your life. All right. Uh, then uh, verse number four says, And it came to pass as they sold some. Some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured them up. Devoured it up. So a lot of times, when you hear good words, sometimes you may be distracted, and uh, uh, the the seed that you was about to sow or to reap or to plant uh, something happened, and it, it uh, was not conceived properly, and the fowls came and devoured it up. And then it says, and it fell on a stony ground and, which had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth in the earth. Those of you all that understand about uh, sowing seeds and planting, it, it's got the root have to have enough room to grow. Many times if you uh, plant something in a pot that's too small, the roots will fill it up and, and they will begin to strangle one another out because they don't have enough room and, and they're seeking more room, seeking the nourishment, and it will stunt the growth of the, the, the crop that you're growing. So we want to have our faith extended so that we can grow in Christ, so that we can be strong, so that we can have the stamina that we need. And the prayer extends our roots where we can grow stronger in him, our faith become more intense and more strong. Verse number six says, But when the sun was up, uh, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. See, that's what I told you. So we're, we're extending our roots. We're watering our, our spiritual lives by the Spirit, by the Ruah, uh, and, and we're getting sunlight. Uh, that comes through our experiences in life. If you don't ever experience anything, you can't tell anybody about anything if you don't have any experience. Sometimes we can talk to people through our experience and they can gain the faith that they need just by in the faith that you have and in the courage that you have in the experience. Uh, the Spirit will speak through your experience and encourage that person to be able to go through and tunnel through whatever the situation is that they're going through. All right, the next scripture says, And some fell among thorns, and, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. So uh, we have a lot of things that, that come against what we're trying to do. And many times people have lost ground because they, they may have, detoured or didn't listen or, or fell off in their prayer life and, and things probably uh, uh, got out of hand. And sometimes people backslide. We're praying for the backslider that they'll come back, come back into the fold. Sometimes people have habits that will cause uh, uh, things not to manifest in their life, cause things not to, to be yielded. Well, we're praying against all those things. We're praying that the Most High will move all those obstacles out the way, all those hindrances out of the way of your life, because now it's time to, to move forward. Now it's time for us to be in a position where we don't, don't have all those blockades in our life. And by all means, we don't want to put any blockades in the front of our own self. Uh, let it be the enemy that's trying to block you. But many times people will have stumbling blocks that they put up themselves of envy, strife, hatred, malice, all those things that you can get rid of that will sometimes keep you from the blessing that you need. Uh, but you have to get all of that stuff out of the way. All right, verse number eight says, And other fell on good ground and did yield fruit, that sprang up and increased and brought forth some 30 and some 60 and some 100. So uh, sometimes you don't get the, the yield that you might expect, 
but some yield is better than no yield. 30 uh, is better than zero. 60 is better than 30. And 100 is better than 60. So uh, we want to get 100. If we get 100 every time, that, that would be a beautiful thing. But uh, we're looking to get over and above what we started with. We want to increase in our faith. You need to add to your faith. And all of those things would be sufficient enough for you to uh, persist and move forward. All right, the next scripture says, And he said unto them, He that hath ears, let him hear. So he's getting ready to explain what's going on. And when he was alone, uh, that they were about him with the twelve, asked of him the parable. So sometimes people need to, to know what the scripture says. Sometimes we people don't understand what the scripture says. That's the glory of being awakened. A lot of times we take for granted a lot of things that we have been taught, a lot of things that that uh, we have heard down through the years. And then sometimes you stumble upon scriptures that you don't understand and, and you just take it that, okay, we just keep on reading. Well, once you become enlightened, more and more of the scripture is going to be able to be understood by you. You'll be able to see. You could go into the Old Testament. You'll understand what they were talking about. It used to be a time that I would read the scripture, and I wouldn't understand exactly what they're talking about because I was so, you know, uh, uh, much taught that you know you forgive your enemy and you know and just turn the other cheek and all of that. You know, but that's got to be taught correctly. And, and you go to the Old Testament, you see where. They was fighting and they they was, you know, going out and, and, and defending themselves and doing things like that. It did it didn't uh blend with a lot of the the teaching like you're supposed to stand up there and be slapped around. No, that's that's not really what the scriptures is about. It didn't want us to be no pushover. It didn't want us to be some just floor rug where everybody just wiped their feet. We had to endure the curses. Now, since the curses are being lifted, now we're going to be victorious. Now, uh, the revenge is getting ready to be uh, get meted out by the Father. So, um, uh, we have to understand what the scriptures are talking about. Things getting ready to turn. When, when Christ began to come in and, and meet out judgment against people, it's going to be so treacherous, some people are going to think, well, wow, is this Christ doing all this? Is vesture going to be soaked in blood? And, and it's going to be a terrible time for those that are on the contrary side. All right, let's move forward. All right, verse number 11 says, And he said unto them, uh, Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but unto them that are without all things, are done in parables. So a lot of people don't understand the scriptures. Some people say, I don't understand the Bible. That's why I don't read it. Well, if you get the spirit, he'll be able to help you to understand it. And then he goes in to begin to explain that seeing that ye may see and perceive and not perceive, hearing that ye may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. And he said unto them, Know ye not this parable? And how then will ye know all parables? The sower soweth the word. So, so we are dealing in the word. The word is powerful. The Bible says in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. And the same was in the beginning with God. So this is what's being sowed daily. When we come on in the morning, we're sowing into your uh, a spirit man, the word, just like you eat food every day, you really need the word. The Bible says, give us this day our daily bread. Well, that's not altogether only food. You need spiritual bread too. You need to feed your spirit man. So this is what the parable is explaining to the people. All right, verse number 15 said, and these are they by the wayside where the word is sown, but when they have heard, 
Satan comes immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their heart. See, sometimes the, the enemy will come. Sometimes people will come and uh, get happy, receive the word, and, and, and obey the word. But then when they get around others that are doubtful and begin to talk to them and, and shake their faith, and say, man, you you messed up your life. You can't go out and party no more. You can't go out and, and have no good time. You got to give up your side piece and all of that. And then they shake their faith because that's the devil coming. It says, and uh, Satan cometh immediately and take away the word that was sown in their heart. So, so they had a setback uh, that's caused them to regress from the blessings of the Most High. Listen at this. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they heard the word immediately received it with gladness and have no root in themselves. So and so endure but for a time afterward when affliction or persecution arise for the word's sake immediately they are offended. So you need something to be able to help you to go through, to be able to weather the storm, to be able to stand when times come that you don't understand things. You know, you're going to have some time that's going to try your faith. And, and, and that's helping you to mature and helping you to grow. So um, these things are going to happen to, to help you to learn how to stand and be a strong individual in the faith. All right. Let's continue. The next scripture says, And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this, uh, this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things, entering in, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. So many times, sometimes people, uh, they allow all the things. That's what keeps people from sometimes surrendering uh, to the perfect will of the Most High because of this scripture right here. It says the cares of this world. You know, you care more about uh, natural things than you, than you do spiritual. Deceitfulness of riches. Sometimes people are getting crooked money. They're selling drugs and don't want to stop. Well, what am I going to do? How am I going to provide for myself? Well, you got to start trusting in the most high. You fool around and get locked up in prison. And, you know, and it's not only young folk. You got old folk selling drugs, selling the med medication and all that kind of stuff, uh, uh, trying to get a uh, little money, deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in and choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. So we want the word to be fruitful in our life. We want it to be able to sustain us and lift us up. All right, let's continue on. And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word, and receive it, and bring forth fruit, Psalm 30, Psalm 60, and Psalm 100. So that's where we want to be. We want to get some kind of yield out of our life. We don't want to go through down here, um, you know, through life non-productive. We don't want to spend our years that he has given, given us as a tale that has been told. You know, uh, uh, Jack and Jill went up the hill to get a pail of water. Jack fell down and broke his crown. Jill came tumbling. It just, people live their life like that. I'm waking up in the morning, going down to the store, get a, a, a bottle of alcohol, come back, drink it up, go to sleep. No, you, you got to live a life more productive than that. You got to have a life that, that uh, show and mirror the will of the most high in your life. Somewhere in your life, you, you, you need to have something in your obituary if you get to that place that expresses your relationship with him that you took out time to seek his face, to do the things that were necessary to secure a spot in eternity. All right, let's continue on. It says, and he said unto them, is a candle brought to be put under a bushel or under a bed and not to be set on a candlestick? So we ain't got this uh, lifestyle to be hid from anybody. 
We don't want to be undercover, uh, 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 save uh, patriots. We want to be out in, the, out in the opening. We don't want to be too loud with it, but we want to have a subtle and a steady light that prove who we are. Listen to what it said. For there is nothing hid which shall not be manifest, neither as anything kept secret, but that it should come abroad. So whatever is done in secret is going to be brought to the light. And it will be better if it be brought to the light immediately so that you won't have to be further down the road. Then some mess come up and you keep trying to conceal things and they come up and destroy what you have built up. So let's let's try to have a light that exemplifies holiness and righteousness so we won't have to be ashamed. The Bible says it's a shame to speak of those things that are done in secret. So we're not trying to have a life that uh, we have to conceal, but we want to have a life that, that is worthy for men to see an open book. The Bible says ye are uh, living epistles, read of men. When they won't read the scripture, when they won't read the Bible, they're looking at you. So you are living epistles. All right, let's continue on because time is steady moving. All right. Uh, if any man have ears, let him hear. And he said unto them, uh, Take heed of what ye hear, and what measure ye meet. It shall be measured to you, and unto you that hear shall no more be given. So what? What I like the one he said, Take heed uh, what you hear. When sometimes you don't want to take uh, negative information. So sometimes you're doing fine, but then you try to decipher it through your your uh, humanistic understanding. You try to decipher the word through your personal desires. You try to uh, 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 process the word through your your uh, selfish desires, and therefore that's why you come up short, and that's why you don't want to to surrender your life. You're trying to process it through your old lifestyle rather than surrendering and giving it up. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. When you start leaning to your own understanding, you get in trouble. That's what causes people a lot of time to give up, walk away from, from, from the Most High. Like the rich young ruler that said, came, fell at his feet, said, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? By the time he got through with him, uh, he, he, he had to walk away because he was rich and he didn't want to depart from that. Sometimes when you try to uh, process this lifestyle through the way that you have been living, it'll trick you, it'll fool you. You'll think that what you're doing is better than what he's offering you, which is a trick. And we don't want to be fooled in life. All right, let's continue. For he that hath to him shall be given, and he that hath not from him shall be taken even that which he hath. Now that's deep right there. So uh, you, you have to watch it. You don't want to lose what you have. Uh, uh, a lot of people come and um, to, to, the, to the faith, and they're happy in the beginning, but when they get to talking to folks, and you know, the folk get to talking that mess to them. You know what's going to happen to them? They're going to end up right where they were in the first place and sometimes even worse. Whatever drove you to Christ is going to, you know, you, drive you back again if you leave him. So you might as well stay with him. Look at all the ground that you've lost. You should have stayed with him. Now you done regressed. You done had other problems, other things that came in and, you done lost ground, and now you're starting over. And sometimes it's tough to start over because it was tough in the beginning in the first place. Hallelujah, to give up things that you you have gotten so used to doing. Sometimes it's good for you to be young and tender when you come to them because when you get old and set in your ways, you know, you got to fight harder. It's a tougher struggle, tougher battle for you. You've been in an illicit relationship all these years. Now, all of a sudden, you got to straighten up and live right. Sometimes people cheat themselves. Well, the Lord understands. 
you know, and that y'all just stay unmarried all them years. The Lord said you living in fornication. Oh yeah, so 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 you have to make that choice. Go on, walk down the aisle. You, I don't understand how people. You know, you've been together, living together 12, 15 years, all of a sudden you get married, now you can't stand each other. That ain't nothing but the devil. That's the devil in your life, and you got to get him out so you can be justified in the eyes of the Most High. Uh Uh-oh, I'm messing with somebody. Let me continue on. Verse 26, and he said, so is the kingdom of God, as if a man should cast seed into the ground, and should sleep and arise uh, night and day, and the seed uh, should spring and grow up, he knoweth not how. You know, and I've done that many a time. You plant something in the ground, you getting running back and forth looking at it, and all of a sudden it pops up and grow up. Uh, you don't know how it did it, so don't even worry about how, how am I going to stay safe? How am I going to do this? Don't worry about that. It's going to happen if you have faith. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, after that the full corn in the ear. So look at all of that. And uh, People don't know. You can take a kernel of corn and it dry it up. You can grow some whole, a whole stalk of corn just from a kernel of corn. That's a mystery. Uh, th- this thing is powerful. He has done some great things that's marvelous in our eyes. Let me move on a little bit further. Verse 29. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he put it in the sickle because the harvest has come. And and that's what's preparing to happen now. That's why we're trying to encourage uh, those of us to to get yourself together because the harvest is getting ready to happen. I'm speaking of the harvest of souls. It's time for us to get down to business and get serious. And and stop being so frantic and stop procrastinating. Go ahead and surrender your life totally unto him so that you can be prepared to be ready. All right, listen listen to verse 30. And he said, uh, Whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God? Or with the comparison shall we compare it? So a lot of people don't understand that uh, life is, is so deep that he's writing a parable to help you to learn how to live it you know you you got to learn how to live life don't just allow your life to just you know be like water you waste water it run everywhere go in the deep cracks you know it's no control situation if water wastes it goes everywhere It, it goes to the lowest area of the house or the room you don't want your life to be like that. It's just like running water, the unstable as water. But you want some order to your life. You want to build some dams. You want to build some structure in your life so you can harness that water to, to be able to go and make some irrigation systems in your life where it can feed areas and parts of your life. Living your life without structure is terrible. You need some structure in your life. All right, let's continue on. It is like a grain of mustard seed, which when it is sown in the earth, is less than all the seeds that it be in the earth. So mustard seed is very, very small, tiny. Then it says, but when it is sown, it groweth up and becometh greater than all herbs. And shoot it out, great branches, so the fowls of the air may launch under the shade of it. So so it's speaking a, a parable how your life could be. When you come to him, you're small, but when he gets finished with you, he's he going to make you great in his eyes. He's going to make your life more sufficient, more satisfactory. But a lot of people don't want to yield their life to him. They're so selfish. They don't, they don't want to do what's required. To be able to be the person that he's designed for you to be. Uh, and, and this way of life will bring the best you out of you. If you will yield yourself to it. Hallelujah. Listen to this. And with many such parables spake he the word unto them. As it were able to bear it. 
But without a parable spake he not unto them, and when they were alone, he expounded all things to his disciples. And the same day when even was come, he said unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. So some people don't want to make that step. They don't want to go to that transition. They'll hear all of these beautiful messages and different things, but they don't want to fully transition their life. They don't want to surrender their life. They don't want to go to the other side. But it's time for us to get up and go to the other side. It's time for us to, to become that person that you expound to be. It's time for us to lay aside every weight, every sin that do us so easily beset us. How long are you going to take before you uh, uh, allow him to perfect uh, those things in your life that you've been struggling with for so long? All right. He said that in the same day when the even was come, he said unto them, let us pass over to the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. You know, you got a lot of folks that got, you know, little, little ways that they think that's going to work. But if, if the most high, if, if the Messiah is not aboard your ship, it's a good possibility it's going to sink. All right, let's continue. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. Okay, now you, you're hearing the, the, the message that I'm building up to about peace. Now, he had been teaching these people and and uh, talking to them. And, and then there's other folk probably in their little ship. Well, I wonder where they're going. You need to be aboard the main ship. Uh, you know, don't be following him afar off. But the scripture says, then there rose a great storm of wind. A great storm of wind is getting ready to arise right now. Even as we speak in the time, in the day we're living in, the, the, the storm is getting ready to arise. It's getting tougher and tougher each day. Uh, we've been telling you that. The storm is getting ready to arise. And the waves, the scripture says, there arose a great storm of wind. And the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. Now, I, I got a small boat. And... Um, and I've experienced being in the water, not during a storm, but just when a barge or something passes by and knock those waves up, it's the most frightening thing uh, to experience. If you're in a little small boat and all them waves, you got to know how to maneuver the, the little boat to cut into the wave and don't let it go side to side. You got to cut and turn it and cut into the wave so it'll go up and down like that. But the scripture said, and there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. A, a lot of us are full right now, full of tests, full of trial, full of sorrow, full of all kind of things, full of trouble in your house, full of trouble in your family. You just got full, and, and you need some relief. Somebody help me, please. I'm, I'm full. I got all these things I'm trying to handle, all these things I'm trying to go through. I'm trying to manipulate all these things because the storm that got so strong and they beat you all around, now you fool. I need some peace. Hallelujah. Then, then it says, And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow, Hold on, let me talk about that. Because the scripture says, And there arose a great storm in the wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. So water was in the ship. How you going to sleep? You must be awful tired to be able to sleep in a boat that's got all kind of water in it. I don't think it was he was just faking or anything to try to test him. He was tired. So you're going to get tired. Uh, many times uh, on this road, if 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 Yahweh got tired, if Christ got tired, what did you think about you? It says that he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow. The pillow probably had some moisture on it too. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, careth not that we perish? How many times have we 
uh, thought that to ourselves. Don't you see me working down here, Father? You don't care that I'm hurting. I'm hurting right now. I'm struggling right now. I'm trying. I'm trying to keep up the pace. Don't you care that we're perishing? Don't you care? Peace needs to come into your life when you get to that place. That's caused men to turn their back on him and to go back into old things that that they once did. When you get overcharged and your boat get full and it's about to sink. The scripture says, and and he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Don't you see what's coming up on the world? Don't you care? That's why we pray. But let's see what happened. And he arose and rebuked the wind and the sea unto the ship. And he said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased. And there was a great calm. Oh, that's relaxing. To know that we're serving somebody, or it's not just somebody, we're serving the Most High that's got the power to speak to your situation. Got the power to, if he can talk to an, uh, the wind, if he could talk to an inanimate object, he made the, the rod of Aaron bud. It grew buds on a, a, a stick that was used to walk with or to uh, a rod of Aaron that budded. He could speak to the wind. He could speak to the sea, to water. He's talking to water. And when the water the, the, grew ears and listening to what he's saying, says he rose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea. He is talking to the water. He said to the sea, peace, be still. Now you're talking about uh, 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 some power. You can talk to water and water will listen to you. You can talk to wind and the wind will, will, will listen to you. You can speak to clouds. So, so this is, this is what kind of power we are serving you're serving the most high that got the power to speak to water speak to wind speak speak to the sun the bible said that that when joshua was fighting the battle that he stepped into that position of power and authority and and prayed to the Most High, and he talked to the sun and said, Sun be still, moon be still. So he, he have entrusted us with, with a power that far exceeds our own understanding. That's why prayer is so necessary. We need to build our faith in prayer. Listen, and let, look at that again. He arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace. Be still. And the wind ceased. It stopped. And that was a great calm. I can imagine that was that was awesome. All of a sudden they going crazy, the wind blowing, and then he waking up, drying his eyes, and hold his hand up. Peace. All of a sudden, shoo, everything just calmed down. So what we're going through, it, it ain't what we think it is. Because we serve one that can speak peace into your life. He can calm all that mess down that you all frantic about. He can calm it down just with a word. Let's look and see what happened. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? That's why we're praying, increase our faith. You hear me pray that a lot. Father, increase our faith because we're going to need it. We're going to need our faith to be increased uh, because things are getting out of hand. Things are getting worse. Things are getting tougher on us as we maneuver. So we need that power. We need to, him to entrust in us that power and authority, authority that we can start speaking like he spoke. Peace 
into our life. We pray peace into our life. We pray in peace into the lives of our family members and those that are around us and those that are going through situations. We speak peace today. All right, the last scripture says, And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Hallelujah. That's what kind of father we serve. That's what kind of y'all we serve. We serve a great power that's able to take us through, that's able to, to, to pick us up, carry us through the situation that we're going through. So we, we, can't, we can't get sidetracked. We need to speak and pray a prayer of peace and sustainability in our life because he's able to take care of us. He's able to calm things down. Now this money situation with these banks, We've been telling you and warning you, these are crooked people. These are these people have done so much now, all of the things they have compounded is getting ready to start crashing in and they're trying to figure out how we gonna maneuver this, how we gonna stop. So they're telling the people, they're letting the newscasters say, Okay, they say they're gonna restore the money for the people. It's getting ready to get chaotic. You know, it's getting ready because people don't trust. People are going crazy. People are running around, uh, uh, bumping into each other because, you know, people do not have peace. So we need peace during this time. We need sustainability, people of the most high. And we're going we're gonna to get it. We're going to keep praying for it. We're going to keep seeking his face in the situation that we're living for, living in. We're praying for peace. We're praying for sustainability. We're not fretful. Fret not yourself because of evildoers. Because they're going to soon be cut off. Hallelujah. So my brothers and sisters, I'm happy today that we can have the peace that we need to be able to make this journey. So don't, don't give up. Don't give out. Don't give in. Don't turn your back on him. But stay faithful. Let's stay faithful. He spoke to the wind and the sea. After he was asleep, he was tired himself. But he was able to get the victory. So we're yet being faithful. We're yet calling on his name. We're yet standing upon his promises. So let's continue to pray for our families, that they will be blessed, that they'll be able to go through whatever is needed and whatever is required. We want to say to those of you that uh, may be new to this channel, that may be your first time or you may be undecided, we want you to subscribe to this channel and uh, we want you to hit the like button because we are doing what we can do and hit that notification bell that you might get the uploads or when we go on live we want you to join in with us in this prayer that we're doing because we're not done yet but we're going to continue to pray we're going to continue to seek his face because we need peace we need peace in the midst of all this problems and troubles and that's going on and what's getting ready to be released in the earth. Oh yes, this is at the beginning. We're in the beginning of sorrows. We're begin at the beginning of, of all these things that have been written in the scripture. It's gonna come to pass, they're gonna happen. So we're praying, we're doing the most powerful thing available and known to man when we pray. So never underestimate the power of prayer, sisters and brothers. Hallelujah. Don't underestimate. I feel better when I pray. I feel better when I when I get into his word and receive the power that's available to his word. I feel better. I can make a day. My day goes better. Hallelujah. When I get into his word. Hallelujah. So we are so thankful. We're so Happy that, that you all are with us today. 
And we're going to say peace and blessings. Don't give up. Don't give out. And don't give in. May the Most High smile upon you and keep you in the center of his will and enable you to go through any and all tests and trials and tribulation. We're going to say peace and blessings. Shalom.